Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Flying with Overkill DCS World. This will be AV8B Harrier Episode 3 in which we talk about the startup and the INS alignment. Now we're not going to go through taxi and takeoff just yet. Um, taxi obviously probably one of the most simplest things you can do. Well maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll taxi the aircraft out. Takeoff, we're going to wait for the next video, which will be following this one right behind it. Um, and the only reason why is because, well, we got three different modes to take off this aircraft. You have a conventional takeoff, fold down the runway, etc., just like you would any other aircraft. Obviously, some twist because of the way the Harrier is designed. But then we have a uh, short field takeoff, okay? And then you have, obviously, the one that everybody's waiting for, vertical takeoff, okay? Um, we will do the takeoff tutorials. And then after that, we'll follow up with the landing tutorial. That way you guys can practice your takeoff and landings um, a little bit ahead of time. Um, normally, I go through all the navigation things first, but I figured this time we'll mix it up and, and do takeoff, then landing, then talk about waypoints and navigation, then get into combat. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the seat and get, get this bird started. Now, I'm not going to go through every single step, step by step by the checklist in the real world. Remember, that's not what I do on this channel. The idea of this channel is to get someone who's interested in the aircraft, wants to get up and fly it, check it out, maybe fly with some friends, and get airborne. Okay, so do not expect this to be by the book, real uh, mil sim status here. Okay, it's just to get you guys moving. Okay. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get after it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the back and make sure my oxygen's turned on. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn on our fuel pumps here, the boost pumps. Turn our DECA switch on, turn the uh, fuel on there. Make sure parking brake is selected. It's on the other side of the throttle there, so as long as you haven't disarmed it, you're fine. The um, thrust buckets here should be down at... Uh, or exhaust nozzle, excuse me, should be down at about 10, 15 degrees, nothing crazy. The idea behind it is to blow the exhaust down. That way it's not blown directly against the tail. All right, we can go ahead and set our lights real quick. That way when the aircraft starts up, we're ready to roll. Get those turned forward. Okay, so that's the master switch. These are the lights that we're selecting. Coming back over to the right side here. Um, actually, before we do that, you also want to make sure the JPTL is turned on and manual um, real, uh, fuel is turned off. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next, let's go ahead and flip that battery forward. Now, you can do one of two things. We can either start up the APU first, let it run for about 30 seconds, and then switch to engine start, or we can go directly into engine start. In the interest of saving time today, we're going to go ahead and just do engine start. As soon as we see some RPMs ticking away here, it takes about 30 seconds. There we go. RPMs are live. All I'm going to do, and you can hear it. So once you hear that noise, we're just going to push the throttle forward, and you'll see that it will stop. And now we're in the idle position. It's about to get ridiculously loud in here. Let's go ahead and close the canopy. You can see it self-locks once the gate is shut. As the engine stabilizes, we can bring all of our screens on. There's left MPCD, the UFC, HUD, right MPCD. All right, coming down forward here, let's go ahead and turn the flaps on, set them up to the cruise position. Make sure your Q, Q feel is set, SAS switches are set, the SAS switches. The yaw shaker, rudder shaker, should be in the on position. Anti-skid, go into the on position. And that is it for the moment. Well, I guess there's two ways you can do this. It all depends on if you want to just be sitting with your thumb up your butt. So, in the event that you want to just be sitting, you know, chilling, grabbing a coffee, whatever you're doing here, you can start turning your radios on. Okay, we can come down here, get the stick out of our way for a minute. Turn our FLIR on, the DMT on, and make sure that your probe heat is in the auto position, which it is by default. So unless you moved it, you should be good to go. All right, so next thing, let's talk about the alignment process. All right, so from the main screen here, we're going to go to Settings, go to Special, find our Harrier. And we have three options for the alignment. We have Unaligned, which we do everything from scratch. We have to enter in the aircraft's initial position. Um, once the position's en entered, as well as the magnetic variance, then we can s set the uh, INS uh, rotary over to ground alignment or sea alignment, whichever one we're at. Um, saved heading only, 
means we can just start up, immediately switch the rotary up to whatever alignment process we need, C, ground, etc. Um, and then pre-aligned, we can literally just turn it straight to IFA, in-flight alignment. Um, and don't have to worry about anything else. So for the interest of the tutorial, I'm going to obviously do unaligned, so that way you guys can see the whole process. But understand the difference, and I will remind you guys what that difference is as we go through it and what's... Um, what points you'll be able to skip as we get through, okay? So let's get back after it. All right, it's not tricky, but a little time consuming, not too bad. The nice thing is all the information is preset in the aircraft for you. We just gotta know where to get it. So from either one of the MPCDs, doesn't really matter, you're gonna select EHSD, okay? Then we're gonna go to data, and we're gonna come down to aircraft right here, okay? And now we have to set the initial position of the aircraft. Now this is real simple to get this information from. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is just bring up our knee board, okay? And it comes up on the first page. Now I'm gonna move the camera over a little bit, that way we can still see. There we go. All right. So first, obviously we're interested in our initial position. So we're gonna tap the position button. We're gonna tap it again until it says north. I hate it when it does this. There we go. So tap it, then hit your two. I don't know why it does that. It's really weird. All right, and then we're just going to type down right here. So we're looking at 415601 and hit enter. Now it's important to recognize that we have uh, degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes on the EHSD, but we are doing degrees, minutes, and seconds over on the uh, UFC. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Basically, whatever's written right here on the knee board, that's how you're writing it. So, let's get to the next one. Oh, we gotta do it again. Tap, east, and now zero, four, one, five, one, five, zero, and enter. You can see everything's populating here correctly. And now we also need the magnetic variance. It's gonna be MVAR over here on the uh, options panel. And we're looking for magnetic variance right here, 6.1 degrees east. So again, just like our coordinates, east first, then 6.1, enter. All right, so, and you can see that right here, magnetic variance east. Now, all we need to do is start the alignment process. So we're gonna go ahead and point our camera down here. I'm not using track IR today because I figure it's easier to keep the camera still for you guys. And we're gonna set our INS rotary to ground. And the timer begins. Now it takes about three minutes, a uh, little shy of, I think it's two, like, two minutes, 56 seconds, something like that, for us to get to our quality status. It will say 0.7 okay. And that's when our alignment is complete. Shut the uh, master caution off here. Let's reset our camera. All right, we can bring our engine status up over here if you want. We can turn the RWR on. Um, expendables to auto and uh, electronic countermeasures into standby. It is very important also to make sure that when doing the alignment process, you have the parking brake locked. You do not want the aircraft moving. It will mess up the alignment. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are waiting for a moment. So let's go ahead and speed things up, and then we'll go ahead and walk through a taxi. And there we go. So now we have quality of OK. So once again, let's get the stick out of the way. And we're not going to go to nav. You want to go to in-flight alignment. You want it to constantly be realigning. Oh, stop it. <clears throat> and then you also want to get us out of data. And it's up to you whether or not you want to use the, the map. I think it's on the right side, actually. Give me a second. It is indeed. So you have the moving map available, or you can just tap that. Oh, that's the waypoint button. Why can I not see this? Oh, there it is. There we go. So you have to tap the map options, and then you can do that. And now we can go back out, and you have your waypoints if you choose. Okay, we don't have any waypoints programmed into the aircraft, so we're just sort of just chilling. All right. Um, for this next part, I will go ahead and put my head tracker on. So give me about two seconds here.
Hua. All right, now the camera's caught up with us. All right, so we're all set there, so now we can push the parking brake forward. You saw how it sort of lit up there. And we'll get ready to taxi. All right. So the other thing that we want to do is we also want to make sure that before we taxi, we find our trim control in the stabilator, and we're going to go four degrees nose down. And this is just to keep it from bouncing the nose up. Okay. For taxi speed, we're going to set our exhaust nozzles to about four or uh, ten to fifteen degrees, give or take. Parking brakes already released. Now. Before we start moving, just like with the F-18, the nose wheel steering button is on the pinky uh, button on the HOTAS, right? So you can see this says cast. That indicates caster, okay? If I depress and hold the nose wheel steering button... Oh, hang on one second. I know why. This is a controls issue. Yep, there we go. Had to set that to continuous. Sorry about the screen blacking out. I don't know why it does that every time I exit out of the sim. And it's only with DCS that it does it. That's what's odd. Anyway, so I depress and hold the pinky button, and you can see it switches to nose wheel steering. At this point, we have 14 degrees of, of uh, movement in the nose wheel. So you're going to want to taxi slowly. Now, what you can do to get around that, while we're taxing, is we can set this down, the anti-skid, off down to nose wheel steering. You can now see NWS. Oh, shut up. And if we depress it now, we get a high range. So it's up to you. Um, again, I'm not here to teach the militarily accurate way, but I would assume this is how they would do it. It makes more sense. And then now we're just going to start adding power. Did we get some taxi speed? So this is without the nose wheel high. Put it into high, and we turn a little bit better. So I do recommend taxiing it on the ground like this. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to get her around. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it for taxiing. There really isn't a whole lot to it. Sorry about the hiccup there in the recording. Bumped the wrong key again. Um. So that's startup and uh, taxi with your INS alignment. And something I did forget to mention, I said I was going to call out things that you had to, that you could skip. So if you do pre-aligned, okay, all you have to do is jump in the aircraft, set your rotary up to IFA. Boom. Done. If you did stored heading, then all you have to do is come in and, for example, what we would have done today is just put it straight into ground and let the alignment process run. And then, of course, there's nothing, which is what we just did where we had to do everything from scratch. Okay. That RWR is loud, so I'm going to turn that off. The other thing I recommend is when you depress the nose wheel steering button to put it into high mode, press the button, then turn your rudders. Um, don't don't touch your rudders until you've actually depressed the button. It makes it a lot easier to control the turn. All right, and we are basically set for takeoff. Um, stand by for the next video, guys, and that's exactly what we're going to start doing. I'll see you guys in the next one.